This is a review of the PowerLead Better Life camcorder which can record in full HD, take still photos and also act as an audio recorder. It arrives in this box which would make it suitable for a gift. It's very well packed and presented. Then inside the box we have an instruction manual which is actually quite useful and makes sense. It's quite comprehensive. There's also a camera in case, driver disc for using on the PC, cables and an HDMI cable as well. It's the guarantee card, driver disc, instruction manual and the most important components of course are the charging cable which is a combined cable with USB and audio plugs to one end and then the charging plug to the other. Now let's take a look at the camcorder. It arrives complete with this lightly padded polyester case with a webbing belt clip, velcro closure, it's actually quite nice to have a case provided with the camcorder because very few manufacturers do this nowadays. It's lined in a lightly flocked fabric, polyester outer, quite tough, lightly padded and has a velcro closure. So it's a nice little extra there. And this is the camcorder. It's quite compact. It has a tripod socket on the base, next to which is this flap covering the SD card port. It uses a full size SD card but can also use the micro SD cards inside an adapter. That comes back into place. You remove the battery by pressing this little battery button here and then the battery slides off. It's a 1500 milliamp 3.7 volt battery just clips back into place again, like so. The camcorder switches on very simply, either by pressing the power button, like so, or if it's already been switched on previously, then you can switch it on simply by opening the screen. To give a demonstration, now because it's already been switched on once, just open the screen, and it switches on automatically. The screen tilts and it can also rotate 180 degrees for doing selfies. But you really don't want to see me. So we'll turn it back again. The menu button has all the menu options. We navigate using this up down button here to adjust all the settings. It's all very simple, all very straightforward. The camcorder can operate either as a camcorder, the mode it defaults to, but via this mode button here you can also change it into a still camera. So that now is a still camera. Still has the same menu access. And it can also be an audio recorder for recording sound only. The record button for videos is here. Very simple, just press start to start the recording and then press the button again to stop. There's a zoom mechanism on the top for telephoto and wide angle. It's a 16 times zoom. It's a digital zoom, so the quality isn't going to be the best, but it can be useful. Another feature I particularly like about this is it's one of the few camcorders I've ever seen that has a lens cap. It's not the most sophisticated affair, but it's this little rubber cover 
that fits on the end and then protects the lens from any scratches or knocks while it's not being used. So that's quite a nice touch there. The camcorder itself is very compact. You can see how it fits in my hand. It's comfortable to hold, very small, very lightweight as well. And then for using it, it doesn't have a viewfinder. You simply film your subject through the monitor screen there. there. You can see my hand. So we take it outside and have a look at how it works. To film something, simply press on the start and stop button, like so. Then you can zoom in. It's quite slow. And out again. Now for a more distant subject, we'll zoom in on the church tower and bell. And out again. You might be able to see that it does judder a little bit, as though you can see each stage as the lens zooms. And for something more close up, the primroses. We'll film zooming in on those. Also, being close up, the focus isn't quite so good. This is definitely much better at focusing more in the distance. Also, with it being a digital zoom as opposed to optical, there is also some loss of quality on the picture as well. So really, it's best not to use a digital zoom unless you really have to. And stop. And now look at some pans. Nice, crisp, clear images of the buildings. We move towards the canal. And then you'll notice the exposure lightens to adjust for the dark buildings here. Some fairly close footage of daffodils with reasonable focus and the angler beneath the bridge. This is a trial of the digital zoom. It's quite slow. That's full zoom and out again. Checking close-up focus. And now more distant focus. This is filmed in standard black and white mode, obviously. This is the sepia mode. The negative mode red, green, blue. Then once filming is complete and you've got all the files and footage you need, pull the tab back here to expose the HDMI port and footage and photos can then be viewed on your TV screen or a computer monitor. Alternatively, and the method I prefer to use, simply take the memory card out and pop it into the computer to download photos and video clips, edit if necessary, and share among your friends. So this is very, very simple to use, ideal for a first time camcorder user very very simple can't go wrong obviously it doesn't compare with the sony and some of the best brands but of course it doesn't pretend to and nor is it priced at their price point either you could get three maybe even four of these for a quality sony price but this is small compact highly affordable and ideal to use as a first camcorder or a spare camcorder or someone looking to upgrade from a smartphone who's decided that they enjoy filming. And for the money, well, it offers exceptional value for money. You can't really go wrong with it. 
but do bear in mind there are some limitations such as the digital zoom as opposed to optical zoom and the fact it has a fixed focus lens.